Hey, what's up? What's poppin'? What's crackin'? What's crackleckin'? What's the goin'? What's the everything? From now on, I think that should be the official uh, intro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Should that be it every time? Just that, that clip? No, I should do it different every time. So it's like, it's the same, but it's different. It's the same, like, rhyming, rapping thing, but it's different every time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. All right, so this is episode one of We Never Thought of a Name for This. <laughs> sports Failed to Load, because my YouTube channel's content failed to load, mm -hmm. so we should just say it's Sports Failed to Load. Yeah, yeah, plus a girl. <laughs> <laughs> sports Failed to Load plus girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's a weird name, but I mean, it fits. It fits. It fits the randomness that this is going to be. Like we're gonna have, we are, we have a plan of what we're gonna talk about. What are we gonna follow the plan? We're probably not. No, it's me. No, yeah, exactly. It's you. So I can try. I feel like this podcast is just gonna be, uh, like I bring up a topic, you ramble on for twenty minutes, and I try to take you, like, stay on the topic. So it's basically just you talking and me being like, no, no, you can't talk about, like, Cheez-Its. Stop talking about Cheez-Its. Nah, bro, I got Cheez-Its. I got pork stuffed animals, dog. I got ice cream. I definitely didn't just eat ice cream for the first time in, like, weeks a few minutes ago. It was, like, sugar-free ice cream, but it was still good. I didn't even know they made sugar-free ice cream. As, as we talked about, nothing else. Okay, sports. Uh-huh. <clears throat> sports. Uh, so... We should start with baseball, since that's the sport we know the most about. Yeah. All right, so Mariners, we're on a 14-game winning streak, and then they just drop two to the Astros. Fucking Astros. Jesus Christ. I think this actually might be cause for concern, because for the winning streak, we didn't really have to face that good of teams. Like, we had to face the Rangers in twice. The Blue Jays were in the middle of like a 10 game losing streak. And then the Padres are are the Padres, you know, like they're 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 just sucked to being around 500. So I feel like this is actual cause for concern because they, this is an actual good team. They went to the World Series last year. They won the World Series a few years ago. They went to the ALCS, I think, pretty much every year since 2017. And we got our asses clapped by them twice. We had no offense whatsoever. It was actually embarrassing. So the thing is, is they like are kind of dead ass the best team in the league right now because they clapped the Yankees the last time. And the Yankees are everybody thinking, oh yeah, Yankees, Yankees. But they like clapped the Yankees. So that like that it wasn't what was it? The Blue Jays Red Sox score twenty five to five or whatever. Twenty eight to five. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't like that. You know, but like those quote easy teams quote, we were like, okay, we were literally fucked when we started out with how awful our lineup was. So it's nice to actually have some chill people to get our ear rage to land. But now we have more of the Yankees in the um, Astros, but we do have Texas coming up. Like the Rangers are pretty easy, so hopefully that'll give our ERA a good boost. But like. Yeah, I do agree. We got to get our offense and oh, I didn't work today. I didn't watch today's game. Did um Julio start? Julio's still injured. No, still? Shit. This is the stupidest thing ever, okay? Uh-huh. Wrist pain. Okay. Yes, but the Mariner said that he got the wrist pain on last Sunday, so like uh the Sunday before the All-Star game when he attempted <laughs> to steal a base and they said that he hit like his wrist went in a weird way after he collided with the base oh, what yeah and but <laughs> what confuses me is that he then went to the next day he uh -huh. hit i think like 82 homers okay yeah. and then he played in the all-star game uh -huh. and then now he's injured I am so so they allowed him to play in the home run derby and the all star game, and they're not allowing him to play in this. Granted, they may not have known, but I just find that weird. How it's like, oh yeah, it's from uh, before the all star break, and he just played in everything in the all star break. I was watching yesterday's game. It literally said I took a photo of the lineup because our lineup was so smexy yesterday. We were playing. Everybody was over two hundred. It was beautiful, and then. 
he was in the lineup and I think he was even on the field for the first half of the inning and for the second half he's supposed to lead off because Julio and he wasn't there and they um swapped the line down so he was literally set up yesterday so it must have either been a Julio being I'm having the moment of my life I'm just gonna work through this pain and then have it or it's like a I I don't fucking know the Mariners, okay, I know I'm going into a totally different tangent, but what do you feel about Scott? I mean, should we get rid of him? No. I'm kind of feeling like he's at his end. No, we should not get rid of him. For the pure reason of uh, he got us, like, every single year under him, we have slowly improved. And now we're kind of at the apex. Like, we have Julio is balling. Uh, France is balling. Crawford is balling. Like, our entire roster up and down is doing amazing. Except for uh, all the injuries. May, may Mitch Hanniger come back soon. He's uh, actually playing. He played an effort today. He's on. Oh, that's right. He's finally on his assignment. So I wonder if uh, the <laughs> is seeing Hanniger play an effort today. Yeah, I was literally talking to my dad. I'm like, dude, we got to get the tickets. I can ask my friend what's going on and see if he's got any bitches yet <laughs> <laughs> i did ask told that to my dad and he's like dude i bet you he didn't get any and i'm like yeah i know that's what i'm talking about <laughs> so this is the apex of kind of his mm. thing like everything is in place we have i was gonna say we have an amazing starting rotation but gonzalez and flexen are, are eh, they're fine but like we got a decent starting rotation we got an elite bullpen like we got everything set up if he doesn't make it this year where everything is set up for him to do amazing. Then I say, maybe we should get rid of him. But I don't feel like we should get rid of him in the middle of the season. Like, he has improved every single year. And this is the apex. This is, like, the make or break it, I'd say. You shouldn't fire him in the middle of the year. Okay, okay. But, like, next year, if this falls through, because it's always at the end of the year, like, running stretch, hey, yo, maybe we'll get it. You know, but now we're set, we're set on the playoffs right now. If it ends, if we keep, like, staying over from now on 500 will be big chilling mm -hmm. i don't know man he's just kind of reckless and kind of interesting how is he how is he reckless no when we had the um ace fight did you see john boy media's friggin video of it For, scott was jumping in and like fighting and punching around <laughs> he was good ass that's fine though that i wouldn't say that's reckless i'd say that's amazing <laughs> He's an old man, dog. I, I say that's amazing. I would not say that's reckless. Yeah. He has okay. made questionable decisions, I would say the least. Like, with the entire Upton thing, we just released him to free agency. Like, we asked him, do you want to be sent down to AAA or do you want to go to free agency? Like, he chose free agency. His batting average, I think, was like 0.12. Don't quote me. It was awful. But yet, he was still consistently in the lineup when Sam Haggerty had, like, a, like the Mendoza line. The Mendoza line is so much better than, like, the .12 that Upton had. I don't know why he did that. That kind of questions me, but, like, his pitcher management and his bullpen management are pretty well. Then again, if you have a bullpen like we do, you don't really need to put that much effort into it. So, the only thing is it's a little bit in the back of my mind about how all these other players were popping off and they come to us and they suck. Well, not suck, but, like, par or subpar. They're when they were, like, above, really, really high above par. Like, you have Winker. He was incredible and popping off. Like, yeah, he's popping off now after he had his whole flip double birds to the fans, you know. But, like, before that, he wasn't doing the best. And you have Toro, who's kind of flopped for a while. Robbie Ray flopped. But it's, like, is it our management is what's making it like that? Baseball is so weird because things seem to happen for no reason. I don't think that's our fault. Winker, as you said, is, you know, he's popping off right now. Uh, Ray is arguably the best pitcher in the American League the last month. Wow. That, that's a claim. <laughs> I, okay, by ERA, I think in the last month, his ERA is like 1.8. Don't quote me. Damn. Like, just the last month. Over the entire year, it's obviously like 3.5. Yeah. But Toro... He, in Houston, Toro was meh. He came last year. He did amazing. And then since the Grand Slam, he's been terrible. Yeah. Like, there's no way to put it. He's just been awful. I I, I remember reading uh, this article where it said, like, since the Grand Slam, 
He's had like a 57 WRC plus. Oof. Awful. Yeah. Yes. That was so funny how I did a Grand Slam on Graveman. <laughs> I was watching that game and that's like, that's incredible. The most passive aggressive F baseball thing ever. I was actually there. I actually saw it in person. Damn, I wish I was there. Third base bag, I was there. I, I saw... Uh, I saw him hit the ball, and me and my friend that uh, was with me, like, we sat down uh-huh. because we thought it was going to be a flyout. We didn't think the angle was high enough. And we watched the go- the center fielder, like, walk backwards and be like, oh, this is uh, going far. And then he just kept walking backwards. And we were like, is that going out of the park? No way that's going out of the park. And then it just, like, Yo. barely went out of the park. The, like, 2,000 people <laughs> that were there were very loud. <laughs> It was so empty. It was so freaking empty. The, like, a hundred fans. Yeah, the most packed section was, like, a random section on the first base side. And even then, it was still, like, 60% empty. You know, I mean, what do you expect for a game that started at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night in the middle of August? 8? Yeah, if I remember correctly, it started late. Alright, let's move to pitchers. What do you think of our starting lineup, and what can we swap? Okay, so our rotation is Ray, Gilbert, Gonzalez, Flexen, Kirby slash bullpen day, depending on what Scott wants. Obviously, the top of our rotation is amazing. The middle of the rotation is Russian Roulette, and the end of the rotation is amazing. Well, it's good. It isn't great. Uh, The weaknesses I see are obviously Marco is a ground ball pitcher and ground ball pitchers are great if they can keep the ball on the ground which on thursday so a few days ago he did not keep the ball on the ground and we got our asses kicked for it well i wouldn't say our our asses kicked like we almost came back in the bottom of the eighth and then pena had to do a superman catch and stuff oh my god the catch was amazing. Like, if I wasn't a Mariners fan, I would, like, clap at that catch. <laughs> but I am a Mariners fan, so I boo it. That jump, though. He, that, that jump looked impressive, even with the terrible camera angles they had. Like, from one of the camera angles, it looked like he jumped, like, a foot off the ground. But then if you watch, like, the home plate camera, it he just, like, oh. Uh, he didn't keep the ball on the ground. And that's a problem. Like, when you go, if we make it to the playoffs, mm-hmm. do you trust Gonzalez with a game in the playoffs? When you are facing teams that can hit with power like the yankees and the astros who don't hit a lot of ground balls i don't trust gonzalez and the uh, same thing with flexing where it's like sometimes flexing games are like he's throwing a no hitter and other times uh we're getting clapped and he's out out of three innings yeah so those two positions are so important because we can trust Gilbert and we can trust Ray for the first couple games of a playoff series. And then we can call on them one more time. But remember, like the, if we want to go deep, we need to have better arms than Gonzalez and Flex at our spots. We need to get another good, really good pitcher. So my two cents is I'm not one for Marco. He's just too up and down. I really don't like it. I think... We should trade him for somebody else. I don't know who. Or maybe send him back down to the minors for a bit to actually get control of the strike zone again. And then for Flexen, we don't see him. He's not that flashy. So he's like just wandering above par, right? And we only see him when he goes down under par. Which I mean, he's just kind of one of the middlemen. And that's not what we need. What I think we should do is have Kirby be a bigger player because he's pretty damn good and he's not getting as much um showtime move him up in the rotation yeah take the spot for marco or something who would you swap who do you think is worse marco or flexen if marco is on one of his god tier days then i would take marco over flexen any day of the week but average if i was just picking bags out of a hat since you're playing russian roulette with both of them Mm -hmm. so i would pick flexen because i feel like his russian roulette is less extreme yeah. Because either Marco's throwing a perfect game, that's exaggeration, obviously, or he's uh, getting clapped and he just allowed like three homers in one inning. So I would pick Flexen. So I agree that maybe a route we can go in the trade deadline is we can trade Marco away for a different pitcher uh, with a few prospects or something. Yeah. But the pr- question is, 
what prospects and stuff. Which leads into our next topic on our list, trade opportunities at the deadline. Wow, wow. Look at that transition. I'm amazing. All right. <laughs> I know. Most basic second grade transition ever. All right. Trade opportunities. What positions do we need? What people should we trade for? You know the drill. I think we big chill in the outfield. We maybe even have like a few too many in the outfield, but it's fine. We don't have to talk about that. I disagree because our outfielders seem like they're made of glass. Glass? That's an interesting metaphor. Hanniger, what I forgot his first injury. Like he did something to his arm. Mm-hmm. First at bat back, he like twists his ankle to hell and back, and he is designated for assignment and ripped up the roster so that way he can make room and put on the 60 day IL. Okay? And right now he's going back, but we don't know. Kyle Lewis has been injured to hell and back for the last like I don't know, year, year and a half, I think. So something like that. Like mm-hmm. so there's two outfielders gone. Kelnick is Kelnick is the greatest 4A player of all time, but he cannot hit major league pitching yet. Okay, we got Julio, who's amazing, but right now he's out for injury. And then we got Winker, and then Frazier also plays outfield sometimes, and Haggerty. Haggerty has been fine. Like, he's been serviceable, but he isn't amazing. Frazier is Frazier. I don't think I need to say more if you watch Mariners games. He wants to make he makes you want to rip your eyes out because it's like, okay, it's it's the bottom of the eighth or something, and we're we have the, he's the go-ahead run. And all he needs to do is just hit a single so that way we can tie the game or something, uh, or something like that. And then he hits into a double play and he makes you want to shoot yourself. Yeah, yeah. And then Winker doesn't know how to beat the shift. Uh, so yeah, I feel like our outfielder situation is we got guys that are either injured or inconsistent, and I feel like we don't need to trade away, like, keep this group, because we don't know what will happen. Yeah, we don't need to trade them away, is what I'm saying, is I'm saying we should work with them more, like, maybe stretching more before the game or something. Okay, off story time, off tangent or whatever, so last year... When I got my first ever Mariners jersey, it was a Kyle Lewis jersey. And the day that I wore that was mm-hmm. the day that he got injured. So he didn't play that game. And then, next, so the first game I went to this year was the day where he got the concussion. The day, bef- the day before that, he got the concussion. And so he wasn't there in that game. And so then I have this mental game thing of every single time I wear my Kyle Lewis jersey to a game somebody gets hurt well more like lewis gets hurt so i've not worn that jersey to a game <laughs> in like a few games <laughs> and uh oh get it signed put it on your wall and there you go you can never wear it again because it's signed oh big brain big brain exactly but then if i bring it to the game to be signed well if you've only ever wore the jersey to the game you never brought it uh, yeah yeah you see? So you don't know if the two are correlated. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I have my other jersey. <laughs> I have one I have uh one Mariner's jersey and that's Kelnick's. <laughs> Your Kelly jersey. Should we go on a Kelly rampage or later? Uh that's next on the list, but we barely discussed trading. So what so we already discussed the pitching and what we think we should be we should trade away and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh outfield is fine. Infield. Yeah, I was literally going to say, because so I was like, France, big chillin'. France versus White, I don't, what is White even doing? Where, what's going on with him? Where is he? He's, uh, he, uh, he I think he's on the IL, uh, but also we have Santana. So why do we need White? Oh, does he play first? Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, San, so, and Santana is a great DH and stuff. And if France needs a day off, then we put Santana in. Like, first base is good. Suarez, he is ballin'. Over there, he has, like, I think 20 homers on the year now. I could be wrong. I really should look this up. I should have, like, baseball savant, like, right in front of me. That would be smart. <laughs> nah, bro, you gotta use the brain. Age 31, at-bats 345, runs 44, hits 82, home runs 16, RBIs 51. Zero stolen bases. Rip, my man's slow. Yeah, but he's he's doing amazing. And then Crawford's Crawford. We don't need to say anything about him. He should have been an all-star. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, he should have been a freaking all-star. Totally should have been an all-star. But second base. Who who the hell plays second base? Like, Frazier, his bat is not consistent enough. 
to play second base. Yeah. Toro's ass. Okay. Dylan Moore is best used as a, oh my gosh, Julio <laughs> just got injured. We just throw him into center yeah, field yeah. guy. Sam Haggerty is the same thing where he's a utility player, but he isn't an everyday player. So who plays second base? That's the position we need. We need to get a, another second baseman that can actually hit consistently. The thing is, is I don't think we need to get one. I think we need to form one. You know, like, I think we need to get Frazier to step up his game or Hanniger. Like, just get Hanniger back. We just need to wait a little bit for second base. We're, like, paying in strong. But Hanniger, Hanniger doesn't play second base. What do you mean, wait for Hanniger? No, you said it. Who, what does Hanniger play? Is he outfield? He's outfield. He's right field. Yeah. What the hell? You know this. I'm goldfish memory, dog. I, Hanniger's not oh. played in a fat minute. I know. <laughs> oh, he isn't He isn't on the at field every day, therefore I forget his position. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm I feel like somebody can quote that, being like, I was listening to this podcast or something, you know, that it has zero views, and the, and the girl on it said that Hanniger played second base. Bruh, okay. <sighs> wow, wow. I see you, I see you. Anyway, the place where I think we need trades is starting pitchers. So I think we need to boot Marco and Flexen, bring up Kirby, and then have a bullpen day for now, and then we get another starting pitcher. Which I mean... Bullpen days means you waste your bullpen. I know, but like... Trade for Shohei Otani, obviously. Oh, yeah, tenfold. Yeah, yo, you know what? Now that I think about it, Marco and Flexen for Shohei Otani, I feel like that's a trade the Mariners would do. Uh, I mean, the Angels would do. Two subpar players, two subpar players for one awesome player. Or one once in a generation player. Yeah. I feel like that's something the Angels would do. I mean, they gave Albert Pujols like a 12-year, like $30 million a year contract, and he only played for two of them, so. <laughs> we'll probably have to sweeten the deal a bit more, but like a lot more. I mean, I trust me, I fucking want Otani. He's just hilarious and really funny. Like in the All-Star game where he's like, first pitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get a hit. And he, it was, that was Did you see the image of him wearing a cowboy hat? No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You put it in a chat once. Best cinnamon roll in baseball. I mean, we could. It could be Marco Flex and Kelnick. But do the Angels want those three? <laughs> That's the thing. It's the Angels. If we're gonna make it realistic, we gotta put some of our young dudes, our young prospects in. We can give Kelnick away because we have an outfield. That is loaded. Kelnick hasn't, like, he's been inconsistent. Maybe they would want to deal him. Just say. Even though I'm a big Kelnick fanboy, and I think he's going to be amazing once he figures out how to hit a curveball at the major league level. That is a great transition to lead us into Kelnick talk, because Kelnick makes us want to pull our hairs out. He's awesome and incredible, but he's kind of a spoiled brat, but I mean, everybody in baseball is a spoiled brat. Except for Julio, because Julio is just perfection. He just needs to get his shit together. And near the end of last season, Seager, like, got him a little bit into the right headspace, but then over the break, he was absolutely gone. His headspace is gone, reduced to Adams, and now he hits shit again. And now he's back to being a AAA all-star. What are we going to do with this child? There are two main options with any prospect. Well, three. Either you throw him to the lines of the MLB... Hope he figures it out, and if he doesn't, you get rid of him. You let him sit in AAA for freaking forever, which is what they're doing right now, until he hopefully figures out his crap, then throw him to the Lions. Or you trade him while people still think he has upside. Hope he sucks, and you flee somebody, and then use him as capital, pretty much. Those are like the three things you can do. Right now, the Mariners are obviously keeping him in triple a and he's being a triple a god hitting like a homer a night and stuff he's only 23 he's made it to the majors at a very young age like some sometimes people spend dec like a decade in the minors before they come up and do amazing or whatever you know he's still young there's plenty of veteran leadership on the mariners to teach him stuff like it isn't like he's uncoachable we've seen what he can do last september like we we know that he can be an all-star and we know that he can be a hall of famer and stuff like we've seen it we just need to wait i feel like we just wait call him up again later 
hopefully he figures it out. This would be his third call up, you know, three, you give somebody like third times the charm, you know, the next time it gets called up, I feel like might be the make or break call up and then they might trade him away. If they're going to do anything with him, they got two weeks left to do it. So who would you send down for him or trade for him so he could come up in bat? That's what I was thinking. We could send Haggerty down. I would be fine with setting Haggerty down. Haggerty or more. Wait, what What are we talking about? Send Toro down. Yeah, but like consistent. Toro, hit, Toro hits like crap. Like one of the consistent guys. Because if we want him to be here, it's not going to be like a sub-in player. Or do you want to keep him a sub-in player for a while? Because I'm thinking like balls to the wall, full on, he plays outfield every game kind of guy, you know? I feel like actually we should like keep him as a, as a pinch hitter. He could learn, like, in the dugout, be more adapted, still face major league hitting, but obviously not as often. Maybe you can group him with another outfielder, like, gr- group him with Dylan Moore. Like, you know, uh, like, Dylan Moore plays the first half of the game, Kelnick plays the second half of the game, like, group them together, so that way he, he still gets MLB playing time, but he isn't a massive liability the entire time, you know? All right, what's the next topic? Uh, I don't know why you put this on here, but you <laughs> added a DH or no DH, which the decision has already been made in the last CBA agreement. There is going to be all DH. Why is this on here? Because I didn't know the decision was made. And also, uh, last year for my final on my my English class, I realized when I, that's when I realized I was a big sports nerd. I, my final was a 10-page essay on if sh- there should be a DH or not. What? Are you are you lying right now? Dead ass. Do you want me to pull it up? Yes, I want to see this. I found the essay. I started it off with the take me out to the ball game thing. I'm very proud of it. I got a good grade on the essay too. I think I got like a 98 or something. How come you have gaps? Because it had to be 10 pages. So you just click space like three times when you started a new paragraph? No, it's twice actually. But it's it's a good it's a good essay. With all the uh the references. That's more references than <laughs> I ever used to any essay I ever wrote. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna swap this out since the decision has already been made. I'm gonna swap this out with automatic strike zone or no automatic strike zone. I think there shouldn't be an automatic strike zone because I like the vibes of the umps. Yes, most of them are BS and everything, but like it's baseball, you know? Having somebody you can yell at when you're mad about pitching is like part of it, you know? I disagree completely. I mean, you already know my stance, obviously, because we've talked about this before. I disagree completely. Ums should be fired. Every single one of them should be fired and replaced with a computer. So even like the um, first place ums and the third place ums? Yes, they should be fired with a computer. I don't know how the computer system would be set up, uh, because obviously it's a base in the middle of nowhere. Are you going to run fiber optic cables through the base underground to see what touches first like but eventually i'm hoping the technology gets good enough where even first place and third base umpires get replaced so what would they do about that would they i mean if i were then i would just have because there's so many fucking video cameras now everything so you have one person just watching the film of that i mean i don't know that is going to be for the future to decide the rule book has specific rules about how the strike zone should be. It is from the top of the knees to the armpits. That is the strike zone. Or is it the top of the numbers? Top of the numbers or armpits, I forgot. But that is the strike zone as wide as home plate. That is the strike zone. It is set in stone. These are the rules. But right now we have four different strike zones. We have the rules, like the rule strike zone, the umpire strike zone, the TV strike zone, I guess you could call it the pitching strike zone, I guess. The catcher strike zone? I, I don't really know what to call it. Obviously, you have the rules. It, it's like this, this, why is home plate, blah, blah, blah. The one the umpire calls, which is flexible as crap, inconsistent, and needs to be set in stone, so that way it's like the rules stri- uh, thing. The TV one, which is nothing like the rules one, because it never changes depending on the batter. Like, if Aaron Judge comes out to bat, it's still a little tiny box. That needs to be updated. That has nothing to do with it. And then you have, like, the pitching strike zone. I don't know what to call it. The area where you could reasonably get away with a strike. It isn't the umpires, but, like, if you... No matter what umpire, you can throw a ball there, and it would be, like, 50-50 strike or ball. Like, the edges of the of the rule strike zone. Like, that... I guess you could call it, like, the implied strike zone. Like, you... you it's 
you can take a risk there and you know it's obvious it depends on the empire i don't think we're gonna get it to change because it took so long to get the dh in and everything and when i wrote my essay they changed the mounds sizes and it took forever for that to get approved i don't think it's going to be approved because of the like perfectionists and of baseball just because something takes forever to get approved doesn't mean it shouldn't be implemented still i think that's part of baseball of having the umps just standing there what are you gonna have the fucking computers wearing the umps mask (laughs) no the just have like have a little screen the umpire can just stare at the screen and then just relay the call to everybody if we really want to have umpires they are human and they make errors and human error in a sports game can cause massive implications throughout the entire game, perhaps even an entire series, perhaps even an entire season. It is a major thing that should be called right every single time, no matter what, so that way it doesn't affect stuff. So that way the, the, the effects are taken out of the game and it is more based on the player's skill. And the thing is, is that baseball needs to adapt in order to stay culturally relevant. One way to do that is to have the strike zone be the same every single time that a player comes up to bat and have it not change based on the will of the umpire. Agree to disagree. (laughs) I have yet to hear one solid argument besides tradition that we should keep umpires. We should forget about some traditions and adapt to the modern age when modern age stuff can do it better. I don't know. How about I do some research and then come back at you next week? After this, on the next thing, is is beach b- baseball culturally dying slash becoming culturally insignificant? Yeah. NBA players, NFL players can set trends across social media and stuff. When was the last time a baseball player set a trend? You see people walking around wearing stuff. Like, bait, like MLB stuff. But a lot of the times they don't watch the games. They just kind of own it as like a fashion thing. The Yankees uh, gear and more often than not is used as a fashion statement more than it is to actually represent the team. I've met some people who like seen the logo, but they don't know that the Yankees were even like a baseball team. Even though they're one of the big four, you could argue they're the smallest of the big four in terms of cultural outreach in America. Even I think hockey has sometimes more cultural outreach in America than baseball. And baseball is like our national pastime. I don't know about that one with the hockey, but I do agree that people use the logo just for fashion. Like at work, sometimes I see people with a Yankees hat and I'm like, Yankees? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, come on, Mariners. And they're like, no, no, I watch the Mariners. I'm a Mariners fan, but Yankees. And I'm like, dog, what? What the fuck, man? Do you own anything that has the Yankees logo logo on it? I do, but I never wear it. It's a pass me down. It's the old Yankees logo, not the new like Aunt Uncle Sam hat with the baseball bat on. It's like the NY. I actually didn't know they changed their logo until last year. I thought it was still the NY. <laughs> there is this one account. Actually, he's a... Um... A Mariners, he's in the, I think he's in double A right now. He's a pitcher and he's got some really funny TikToks. He's not like really famous. I don't follow TikTok. I, I Instagram and then watch TikToks from Instagram because I'm cringe like that. I feel he's got a small following, but yes, I do agree that it needs to be brought up more. I don't know what we can do about it because baseball is kind of the like redneck hometown thing, you know? So it's hard to get more people into it. Like, honestly, I don't even know how I got into baseball. Like, COVID, I got sad without sports. And then the baseball was the first thing that came back. And I was like, sports? Sports? Huh? Huh? (laughs) Baseball has multiple problems if it wants to become, I guess, culturally relevant. Mm -hmm. So one is the extreme regionalization of baseball by its very nature of how many freaking games there are. You know, for example, in Se- in the Seattle area, you can only get Mariners mm-hmm. games. Like, unless you pay $200 a year, you're only getting Mariners games ever. You're, you're never going to get, like, a, a Red Sox game or a Braves game unless it's the playoffs or unless it's one of the few times they have a nationalized televised game before October. That's one barrier, and that's mainly due to, like, the cable networks wanting to cling on to cable and all that stuff, and everybody hates blackouts. We can get into that later. You have the, I guess, pace of game 
that isn't really suitable for how attention span slash human interaction is going. Like human interaction is going in a way towards shorter equals better. Like how much can you say in a short amount of time? The average baseball game is like three hours and 15 minutes. I think last time I checked. The average hockey game is only, I think, two hours and 50 minutes. And the average football ga- American football game is like three hours long. And the average basketball game, I think, is only two hours and 40 minutes long. So compared to the other ones, baseball is so slow. Especially since a lot of the time, like a baseball player fails 70 to 80% of the time to get a base hit. And even then, a base hit means it didn't go towards an outfielder's glove, like an outfielder's or infielder's glove, and it landed in the middle of nowhere, and they safely got to the to, to first. Like they didn't beat out the single. There was like and stuff. Like by its very nature, baseball is kind of a very passive, I guess you can say, game that doesn't have a lot of excitement. Another thing I think is that the excitement from baseball comes from the knowledge of baseball. The more knowledge you have of baseball, the more baseball is exciting because you know, because he stole second, the double play is no longer in order. And that means that the infield can play further back and stuff like this. All this like dominoes effect is how baseball, at least to me, is super exciting is that I have that knowledge that because like because he stole second, the double plays not in order, and he can run to third and not worry about being forced out. He knows he has to be tagged and stuff, which, again, takes time to learn. Like, getting into a new sport, into a new league, takes so much time. And especially when there are so many little exceptions to rules, like there are in baseball, it takes even longer. Getting into it is really hard. It's a lot about the players. It's, you know about the players, you know what they've been through. It's a lot of just interacting like that, and that is really hard to get into. And the thing is, one of uh, my old friends, he didn't like baseball because of how slow it was. I tried to make him watch baseball so many times, but no, no. And it's just, I don't know what we could do, because we can't change, what are we going to do, change the game to be four innings? No. We can't do that. So what are we going to do? I think we just have to... What I do is I have baseball on in the background while I do something. Like, I'm an ice skater. If anybody listens, probably not going to listen to the podcast, but it's fine. <laughs> and so when I bead ice skating dresses, I like having a Sean in the background. Like, my last ice skating dress, um, I watched Stranger Things because it's like the week of the All-Star break. And... I have, uh, like, the Mariners game on, and I do that. Or, like, you have the Mariners game on to do homework or text people. It's a good background thing because, like, you have it on. You are really good at multitasking, you know? We could rebrand it as something else as, like, a background sound. I think so, because that's what I use it for, you know? I disagree because becoming a background item doesn't generate cultural importance. You know, like, the air conditioning is background noise. Does that make the air conditioning culturally important? The function of cooling down the house, that makes it important. Baseball being noise doesn't necessarily help it grow. It helps it become better noise, I guess you could say. I'm explaining my point terribly. Oh, no, it makes sense. But the thing is, is me doing that has got me into baseball. The backgroundness of it also helps learn all those nuances that are required to kind of get excitement out of baseball too. The first Mariners game I ever watched was last year. Uh, no, it was in 2020. I was the same thing as you. It's like, sports are gone, I'm gonna die. And then it's like, oh my gosh, baseball, I guess I'll watch a game. And then I went on this long tirade of like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this and stuff? So yeah, I guess that background is can't help. But I don't think that should be the main selling point. The main selling point should be the excitement that it can bring. But the excitement is, again, needed knowledge and stuff. So you're kind of in this cycle. Marketing of the players is extremely poor. Baseball is the perfect sport, like the freaking perfect, ex- most perfect sport ever for a marketing team trying to gear people towards athletes because there is no archetype of a baseball player. It, it, with basketball, you got to be tall. With football, you got to be 
extremely fast or extremely muscular or like extremely heavy and really good at not letting people tackle you when you're playing offensive line okay and like a hockey player needs to be skinny and fast you know like there are archetypes to these sports but baseball there is no archetype there is no baseball player there is a like six foot seven guy who's playing next to a five foot tall guy who is playing next to a guy who weighs 300 pounds who's playing next to a guy who's like a freaking twig like there's no archetype of a baseball player that is perfect for marketing because then you can market to all these different groups literally without trying to market towards and they don't do it they they suck at it they don't they don't push their athletes to the spotlight which is kind of how other sports do it like you know lebron james you know stephen curry like the nba pushes them to the forefront so that way like they try to make them culture icons but with baseball they're not trying to make their people cultural icons like they're only trying to market baseball to baseball people which i guess works like it, it, they're still making money and stuff like their revenue has grown all the time but in terms of gathering new fans marketing towards your current audience can only get you so far in terms of rejuvenating the current audience you know i agree baseball is a lot wider of an audience and everything but the thing is how do we make people watch it to get this marketing and everything and all of that across that's my only thing because what are we going to change cut the games in half no make the games faster we kind of have it used to be a bit slower because well no with the more um, specialized pitching these days eras are getting lower and lower so get better at hitting <laughs> the solution is so easy okay i remember reading this article or watching a video i forgot i think it's a video where in the late 1800s early 1900s baseball like it's the dead ball era okay it no nobody's doing anything it's the dead ball era. And they wanted to make baseball more exciting, to appeal to more people, to make it, you know, more entertaining. And the thing they did was move the pitching mound back to its current location. Because the more distance a ball has to travel, the more time the human brain has to react to it, meaning that they can make better decisions, meaning that they can get more people on base, meaning they can create more excitement. Do that again. Move it from 60 feet, six inches, to like 61 feet six inches like even that one foot can add so much reaction time in a game where reaction time is everything that right there i think is the solution just move the pitching mound back so that way people have more time to read the pitch that's it now you got more balls in play uh people are not striking out as much because they can read the ball better that obviously doesn't fix like the marketing and stuff and like how do you get new fans but at least now the game is more fast paced i guess you could say more people would get on base and stuff i'm not educated enough on this topic to be able to share but that being said i don't know if it's going to be that easy with the specialized pitch pitching of these days like you see some pitches that look like they're just going to be at the top of the zone and then drop all the way to the bottom i mean this is what you get for uh very minimal preparation yeah yeah this is going to be one of the episodes where, like, if we do continue doing this for a long time, we're going to look back and be like, oh my gosh, we were so stupid. What the hell were we thinking? And that was actually the last topic on the thing. Adios, muchachos.